Hi, Nicolina. Hi, Benjamin. Thank you so much for oh. having me. Thanks to you. Thank you to be here. We are waiting a little bit for people to join the live. I mean, it's, uh, you know, the way today people watch video, it's not necessarily live, but if there are some people that would like to attend it now, so it's open, we wait a little bit, and then we'll start uh, with your interview and a visit uh, from your blue Brooklyn studio, is that correct? Yes, from my very blue Brooklyn studio. Cool. <laughs> uh, so, uh, welcome everybody uh, on this uh, Museum Week uh, talk. Uh, just a few words about uh, Museum Week for the one who, who don't know that much the event. It's run by a non-profit organization based in France. Um, and uh, since uh, 2017 now, uh, and it's very much uh, devoted to social impact, culture, and innovation. Uh, innovation not necessarily meaning uh, high tech, uh, but that's the that's the our horizon is to change mind, to contribute to uh, build a more resilient societies. And especially this year, uh, we felt that um, something has to do on some very important themes. Um, and we incite our community of galleries, libraries, archives, museums, and artists to participate with us and to spread content, to spread the word about, you know, um, if we don't pay attention to the world that we are building now, if we don't pay attention to the way we structure brains online, the physical world is going to pay a high price. We need culture. We need, you know, uh, content, history, science, uh, heritage, all these kind of things. So, um, yes, and especially on the theme of environment. So um, you might have heard that the EPCC panel of experts has delivered his six reports and that this planet is not feeling well. Well, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so um, we have all the reasons to be worried and... Um, if you have a doubt about that, we don't. Uh, but if you have a doubt, uh, have a look at the frequently asked question of the IPCC website, and you will be you will understand you will understand with facts what's going on when we speak about global warming. So this is why we have a day devoted to environment, and this is why we have uh, today uh, the luck to speak with uh, Nikolina Kovalenko, which is a U.S.-based artist and who define, define herself as an environmental artist. We will know this, what it means later. And thank you, Nicolina. Uh, first, could you tell us uh, some words about you? Uh, what is your trajectory, academic trajectory? Have, have you always been an artist? Uh, I, will, I, I think ever since I was a kid, I wanted to be an artist. My, both of my parents were artists and uh, even my grandfather. And um, so I grew up in Soviet Union and we didn't exactly have the abundance of toys. I remember just uh, coming to my mom and describing her uh, a character I imagined and she would draw it for me. And then I would uh, color it and cut out and that was my toy, right? So I would uh, always associate my um, inner world. Everything was surrounded me with art. And uh, I always loved drawing as a kid. And uh, when I was 10, I went to a professional uh, art school. And uh, to be honest, this is uh, the thing I love to do. I think it's so um, fulfilling that I can exp express my ideas, my uh, emotions, my feelings uh, on canvas. And uh, yeah, I feel very, very lucky to have this uh, incredible tool. Mm -hmm. So it comes from far, this... Uh will desire to be an artist They're interesting um so let's speak about what what you do today i mean or what you have been working on uh, you describe yourself as an environmental artist what does it what does it mean for you uh so my art is about climate change and uh, humanity's psychological connection with nature and uh, all of my projects are based on different fragile ecosystems. So they are, uh, all of my um, painting series are inspired by a particular location. 
My very first one uh, was about illegal logging in the Brazil and Amazon. I went to, um, it's, it sounds much easier than what actually <laughs> happened. So basically I went to a Brazilian Amazon and uh, I found the legal logging site and I took a furtage, uh, like, um, like, like when you rub a coin and you have the, uh, the pattern on the coin left on the paper. So I was rubbing on the uh, log trees like this. And um, that's what, that's what I um, brought with me. And then I paired it with uh, fingerprints of uh, volunteers and environmental activists uh, doing reforestation. So that was what kind of jump started this um, and opened this uh, door into this environmental uh, world for me. Then the second project was in uh, Iceland. It was on glacier melting in Iceland and I was living there for, um, uh, for a few months and was just, just fell in love with uh, nature there, the way it was um, mythical and uh, mystical. And then right before the pandemic started, I went to um, I went on a backpacking trip to South America for six months. And mm -hmm. one of the, which is something I always wanted to do and just, you know, life uh, got in the way and I never, um, I never had a chance until then. And then I got my scuba diving license in Colombia, which is again, something I always wanted to try. And that just, that very first dive just converted me. I was like, mm -hmm. oh my God, this is so gorgeous. I cannot believe nobody's painting this. This is all I ever want to paint. Everything about it, the textures, the colors. Mm -hmm. So um, I then actually like Colombia, I wouldn't say that's the best place to dive necessarily. So afterwards I went to the Red Sea in Egypt, which is still uh, very uh, relatively uh, intact as far as coral bleaching goes. And uh, I taught myself underwater photography because I only use uh, my own photos as a reference. I feel mm -hmm. like a photo is just a placeholder for memory. And if you didn't experience it, then it doesn't really count somehow. <laughs> so I went to the Red Sea in Egypt and uh, I was there for diving for about two, three weeks. And uh, I was just endlessly inspired and I got home um, to Brooklyn and I started uh, painting this uh, series of uh, coral paintings, which I uh, called Utopian Reefscapes. Mm -hmm. So reefscapes for, right, because they're paintings of coral reefs and Utopian because abundant coral reefs like this, they are unfortunately disappearing. Mm -hmm. We're losing them through um, climate change, right? Global warming, coral bleaching, um, water acidification and other environmental threats. And first I just started painting corals because I thought they were beautiful. But then I started learning more. I started um, uh, collaborating with scientists. And uh, I realized that first of all, uh, only 5% of the ocean has been explored. Can you imagine? So 5%, right? And then the ocean covers 70% uh, of our planet. So we seem to be very, have very little interest. We're more mm -hmm. interested in space, right? Than knowing what's underneath the water surface. Uh, mm -hmm. And second, I realized that actually coral reefs are um, deteriorating and uh, already we lost 50% of them. And in another 40 years, if uh, nothing changes, uh, they're almost going to be uh, extinct, right? So let's put it this way. Our kids will know, know more about coral reefs than they know about dinosaurs, right? It would mm -hmm. be some kind of ancient history, something that used to exist, but we, we don't uh, currently know exactly how it looks like. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I just uh, started uh, diving into my studio uh, every day. And uh, uh, every day I would uh, learn more about... Uh, um, marine biology and the state of the mm -hmm. environment. And uh, so you, you, you represent endangered nature elements. This is correct to say it this way? Um, I guess you could say it this way, uh, but I just want to uh, add one clarification. So I, I'm not painting uh, bleached corals, right? I'm not painting dying corals. My idea is more that I want to mm. um, inspire. So I want to paint perfectly abundant reefs to show what's worth saving on our beautiful mm. planet, right? Mm -hmm. Not the, not to reprimand, oh, look how we're messing no, no, no. up our okay. planet. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So that's okay. why, mm. um, so basically I'm mm. building my coral reefs not from just um, one photo I take, because as I mentioned, it's actually not all that abundant uh, at this point. 
but I'm, uh, it's almost like a collage. So I'm putting together, I take, let's say, a structure from, uh, from one photo and then I start populating uh, my okay. reef mm. with different corals from, uh, from all mm. the other photos to create this uh, feel, uh, feeling that it's almost like Garden of Eden if it was underwater. Maybe you could show us, um, because since yeah. I think we are, we are in your studio now. Yes, you are. And uh, uh, I'm going to start with um, this piece here on the wall. Let me just uh, try to make sure you have it. Okay, here we go. So this one is called a good coral day. And this is exactly what I mean by um, making festive and perfectly abundant reefs. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to start slowly zooming in. And uh, this is my favorite kind of coral, by the way, the uh, white ones. Uh, the, I call them dandelions, which I'm pretty sure is not the scientific name, but they're just mm -hmm. so ethereal. I'm nice. En endlessly fascinated by all those textures. They look alien and uh, a little bit like flowers at the same time. However, Corals are actually animals, they are not plants, which is something I had no idea about until I started diving. You we just had a reaction from Karina Mack, who said, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Karina. <laughs> and, and some of them, kind of, the textures kind of resemble um, the shapes we know. Like For example, this one looks very much like a big tree. And some of them are completely alien. Mm. This one is uh, often uh, a painting of an anemone. Let's see if you can, there we go. Yep. So, yeah, okay. So um, it's really taken out of scale. Thank God they're not this large in the real life. Otherwise it would be a terrifying dive. But as you know, uh, anemones, um, they have symbiotic relationship with clownfish, like little Nemo, mm -hmm. right? So um, anemone is actually poisonous for most of uh, uh, sea creatures, except for clownfish. So they provide shelter from predators and the clownfish cleans them in return. Mm -hmm. And this one is called uh, a rendezvous because I feel like they almost uh, talking, the two anemones <laughs> in some mm -hmm. alien way. Excellent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then mm -hmm. um, this one, let's see if you get the whole picture. Uh, here you go. So this one is called uh, Ikebana. Ikebana mm -hmm. is an art of uh, Japanese flower arrangement. And unlike in the Western world, where we think of a bouquet of flowers as uh, uh, putting together similar flowers, Ikebana is more sculptural and more metaphorical. Uh, they would put together, for example, one flower, one shell, one piece of driftwood, one feather, and together they would create a new feeling, almost like in haiku, you know how the three lines in haiku poems, they're not yep. actually connected by meaning, but mm -hmm. together uh, they create they make... a new mm -hmm. feeling. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So this is how I felt about this piece. Even and through the camera like this, we feel uh, a whole world. Yeah, that's, that's the idea because now, for example, mm. at the studio, I have um, several of them on display and they become really immersive. Mm -hmm. And by the way, this uh, feather looking uh, coral is uh, what I saw on my very first dive. And this is exactly what got me converted. So again, you take, you take pictures or you use pictures that you in high definition that you find on the internet or you, you go dive and take your, your own pictures. No, I only use my own pictures. You use your own I believe, pictures. Yeah, mm. well, I believe like that's the only uh, way I can really convey because uh, uh, I only use a picture basically as a reference to add details. But at the same time, I want to remember the feeling. What does it feel like to actually be there? These structures are called uh, uh, sponges. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is something what uh, Gaudi would build, I feel like, mm. right? They're, They're really organic. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Very organic, yeah. yeah. And they mm -hmm. resemble um, musical instruments. Mm -hmm. So and then uh, this piece, I'm going to start with, with a close up and then back out. Mm -hmm. So this piece is uh, 
of a fan coral, which is another uh, one of my favorite corals. It's, it's huge, it's vertical. Here we go. So um, fan corals, uh, they almost look like underwater lace and painting them is just so meditating. Uh, they, as I mentioned, corals are animals, right? So they grow on the vertical wall and they usually uh, perpendicular to the current and they filter the current. Uh, meanwhile, the, um, the actual like little coral animals, let's call it, they're, fe they're feeding on the plankton. Mm. And they, they, uh, you would see a difference between corals with open polyps and with the closed ones. Uh, another interesting thing I had no idea about until I started diving is that um, as you dive deeper and deeper, you start losing colors, which is uh, really interesting for me as a painter, right? Because mm -hmm. colors only exist as mm -hmm. long as the light does. So as you dive deeper, you start losing colors in rainbow order. So first you lose all oh, the really? reds. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's really fascinating. So first you lose all the red, then all the orange, then all the yellow, right? And at the depth when, uh, where these corals grow, which is about um, 18 meters, let's say, everything is in monochromatic blue. So you would, if wow. you cut your mm -hmm. finger, you would only see blue, right? So <laughs> you, like, you, you have no idea what color the objects are in front of you unless you have light or you set the white balance. So it's mm. really fascinating. And as you could see, this is my uh, personal uh, meditation room in a sense, because uh, that takes a while that I don't even call it painting corals. I call it growing corals. Oh, it, it's very, very, uh, could you tell us um, what's the size? Because it, uh, on the image, it looks big, like two meters or one meter and 70 uh, or yeah. 80. Um, sorry, I'm um, I'm not sure in meters. So it's oh, 54. Um, I'm trying to convert those. So it's it's 54 sorry. by 80 inches, which I think it's, it would be something like two meters by a meter and a half. Yeah, yeah, it's what I yeah, thought. Yeah, so it's I mean, mm. pretty large. And I'm also going to show you the one I'm working on now. So this is an uh, unfinished piece, and you will see how it progresses. Mm -hmm. So I start with having. Um, I start with having a background and uh, with overall composition, like the structure, right? So here it's like this beautiful pillar. I'm going to call it the um, Kareatida, you know, the um, Greek uh, yes. column in yeah. the shape of a woman. Yep. And then I start populating it with all the coral I can. Oh, I yeah, can yeah. Basically, get so you see. So this also one is something, called, uh, uh, yeah, also Gaudi. Also something like this, very yeah, living. Very nice, uh, yeah. This one is called brain coral for uh, yep. right, obvious reasons. And uh, these always remind me of flowers. It's kind of little blossoming. And then Amazing. some things you, yeah. I don't even know what it is. And yeah, as you can see, um, when, I, when I do the um, background, I make it a little bit more smudged, which is the technique to show that it's further away from you, right? Because you don't mm -hmm. see things as crisp as if they're further away. And this, for example, is just a little, right? It's a little sketch, which is uh, where another set of those white dandelions will go. So everything what looks um, like a big brush stroke, this is unfinished. Oh. It doesn't Still quite look a lot unfinished. Of work to do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, like, for, for example, as you see, this guy definitely needs some work, right? Uh huh. Yes. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. So this is um. It takes a really long time. It takes me about mm. uh, a month of uh, uh, continuous work okay. to grow one of these. But it's mm -hmm. very satisfying. Like the way I, I was talking at the beginning, that I feel uh, lucky and fortunate. Um. When I'm having a bad day, I come and paint and it somehow magically makes everything better. When I have a good day, I do the same and it's sort of, uh, I channel this energy uh, into the canvas. So I just mm -hmm. really, really feel that it's uh, an incredible mm -hmm. tool to, uh, to go through life. I also wanted to show you one piece, which is not um, actually of coral, but also uh, under the water. Let's see. So this one is uh, mm -hmm. not jellyfish. Yeah. They are oh, no? bubbles. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, they are okay. bubbles oh. from the diver's mm -hmm. breath, right? 
right yeah. towards the surface. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So they are like... We have a comment from Karina Mack again. So liberating. The pictures will do so much good in the world. The sea is so healing. No wonder. Before we are born, we live in water. It's true. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for this comment, Karina. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like water is a safe place for, uh, for a lot of people, right? Like everybody finds the sound of the wave, uh, waves calming. And uh, yeah, many, um, many people ask me if I'm afraid when I scuba dive, right? Because mm-hmm. it's, uh, well, you, you feel like you're into, in the unknown. Uh, but the truth is uh, you just need to relax. So that's mm. one thing I learned. And I'm very kind of very, very active person. And mm-hmm. when you start diving like that, you get excited. And you're like, oh my God, there is a fish, there is a coral. And then you waste, uh, well, okay, not waste, but you spend your uh, air in 20 minutes. Mm. But all you need to do is relax. You just uh, let the water carry you. You get what you um, what you call the um, the perfect buoyancy, right? When you are not floating up and not sinking, mm-hmm. you move slowly like an astronaut, and then it's the most relaxing experience you will ever have. And also, all the fish will come to you because once you chase it, it the, the last time you you saw him, right? And um, last painting I actually wanted to show you here. So this is my little. Uh, painting station so that's pretty messy at the moment but I decided mm-hmm. I will show you a real thing mm-hmm. that's nice uh, and this uh, this painting is uh, actually based on my um, photo shoot in Iceland so this is a piece of okay. uh, seaweed I found uh, beach combing on the beach and uh, the color of it was actually brown so the color of, uh, of a film if it makes sense right like this uh, um, rusty rusty brown but mm-hmm. it was so wet that it reflected the sky and appeared blue. And I thought how it was one of those uh, moments you cannot claim or own. Because if you try to pocket this piece of seaweed, right, you, you will just end up with something dried out and brown. It will never be this gorgeous, vibrant blue. So it's one of those experiences you just need to live in the moment and uh, uh, bring it in your heart and... Uh, the best way to preserve it is perhaps uh, either by uh, memory of that experience or maybe putting it uh, into a painting. Mm. Amazing. Wow. I'm, I feel I'm diving. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, now uh, it's going yeah, to be yeah. easier for you to get the actual scuba license. <laughs> yes, exactly. So uh, that's very, very, very interesting. And uh, I have a question uh, because when... Um, oh. I mean, in the history of art, I mean, there, there is this, um, this tradition, I would say, to paint nature, right? That's mm-hmm. already ex- existing. You called yourself an environmental uh, artist. So what, what, is, what is the... Um, is it because, because of the cause of environment that you decided to uh, have this, um, this title, I would say, of how, what is the, what might be the difference between someone painting a mountain like mm-hmm. Cezanne did uh, in the south of France and you? <clears throat> uh, well, I, I would like to, th- <laughs> to think that I, <laughs> that I can somehow put myself uh, with Cezanne in the same, you know, but uh, uh, <laughs> no, I wish, no. So uh, basically I work with scientists um, and mm. I think artists and scientists, are, we are a very good team uh, because artists can inspire, right? Uh, we are very, like as human beings, we are very visual creatures. It's easier for us to see once than to hear hundred times. So that's why, let's say, the, like political propaganda art was very like strong during certain mm. periods, right? Like they, like we know the power the art has to just bring the message exactly the way uh, it needs to be seen or heard and then scientists they actually know how to make how to do field work right how to make the world a a better place so uh, from the series I had a a solo show uh, at Coldwell Gallery Hudson um, with my utopian reefscapes and we were donating 20% to uh, Coral Reef Alliance which is uh, Mm -hmm. an amazing organization taking care of our oceans and there are many, many wonderful um, scientific initiatives there. Uh, they 
not not only do they um, explain like what you know what's happening, what needs to happen. Not only do they monitor, but they do really important work uh like building filters for example for sewage and uh, agricultural water so they don't get into the mm -hmm. ocean uh they do all kinds of research on uh, um super corals which are supposed to be the corals less affected by global warming right so they it's i can't even start describing um what needs to mm -hmm. be done right uh so that's why I think I call myself environmental artist because I feel like it's not just uh, oh I see a pretty tree I uh, paint it. It's, uh, so yeah, that's exactly this. I mean, this is the very much different. You work with scientists. I mean, you. Yeah, sorry. Excuse me, I interrupted. I don't know. Not at all. <laughs> so uh, and even when I and even when I uh, don't work directly with scientists, I uh, always uh, um, make sure that my work like benefits. Uh, either local communities or um, environmental organizations focusing on that problem. Like I did the same, for example, in the Brazilian Amazon. And uh, uh, I, f I feel like even um, understanding the problem on a deeper level, I guess, maybe that's another difference, right? Than just uh, uh, painting something uh, beautiful. Uh, right now we're talking about corals, but for example, um, if, you, if you go on my website and you read a bit more about the uh, Brazilian Amazon uh, project, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, also you, you realize uh, eventually that it's not as, as black and white as it seems at the beginning. There are um, all those issues you're not aware of. So it's, uh, it's really fascinating to understand uh, uh, nature on a deeper level. Mm -hmm. And try, Would it I try be, to help yeah. as, mm. as much as I can. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, I just uh, thought about the word. I mean, could I just, I mean, I just, I think I invented it, but uh, could I call you an artivist? <laughs> artivist? Uh, yes, artivist, actually, like uh, yeah, an, this, an this activist? Does exist. Yeah. Oh, it this does exist? Does okay. Exist, so, yes. okay, okay, of course. <laughs> okay, so it described, it described, I mean, you find yourself into this world. I mean, yeah, yeah okay, that's interesting. So, um, so n when you say you work with scientists, it means that you when you when you sell your art, percentage goes to some funds or whatever. Or do you also work with scientists uh, when you work? I mean, when you create, do you do you do that or? Uh... Uh, no, not. Um... Not when I'm creating. So either, like I mm -hmm. said, I either donate uh, part of the profits uh, like from specific projects to specific mm -hmm. organizations, right? Uh, or I help with uh, fundraising. I donate my um, art uh, artwork a lot for the fundraising or auctions. Uh, I also um, give talks. Like, for example, I did several um, conversations similar to what we're having right now with uh, Coral Reef Alliance and uh, uh, Counting mm. Corals, so different organizations trying to bring awareness because I think knowledge is a, a power. And let me again give you one example um, from the Amazon. When I was there, I was shocked to see that um, people threw plastic in the Amazon River. And you would think, okay, so us as tourists, we know that this is, uh, you know, you cannot do, why would you do that? And, uh, but people who live there, their livelihood entirely dependent on the river. Uh, the houses were built in the pontons, fluctuating mm -hmm. with the level of the river. They, uh, they had fish from the river. They drank water from the river. So they bathed, they did one, like everything was connected to the river. Yes, they were uh, throwing all the plastic and garbage in there. And um, if they knew what it does, they wouldn't be doing this, right? So uh, I think education is actually the main, uh, the main reason. Uh -huh. somebody, would, somebody does not care. And that's not uh, on an individual level at this point, right? This is uh, uh, government's uh, failure to provide adequate education. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you, you also are trying through your engagement uh, on this theme to raise awareness. I mean, this is a way also to insist because we know what happens, you know, with time. We forget things. <laughs> we get you all oh, environment again. Mm -hmm. Yes, but still, I mean, it, it's coming. I mean, it's, a, it's, a, it's it, we're really not, a, we're just seeing, you know, the tip of the iceberg. I mean, if I may say, mm -hmm. of course, in such a yeah. context. I mean, there are some people who say that they don't believe in climate change, uh, but it's science. It's not Santa Claus. You're not. <laughs> it's not about believing in this or not. Yeah, that's why I, I was quoting the IPCC 
uh, report because I mean it's it's there is no uh, I mean some people think that the earth is flat I mean I mean they can you know but uh, it's a it's a it's a fact I mean you, you can agree or yeah. disagree but it's a fact it's it's yeah. a, it's, a, it's a it's already here so um, exactly it's a it's an unfortunate fact and uh, yeah uh, I would like to say that. Um, on individual level, we can at this point just if everybody starts recycling and not uh, using plastic mm -hmm. and living mm -hmm. sustainably, that we can uh, uh, really tip the scale. But uh, we are past that point, so we, apart from everybody, of course, needing mm -hmm. to you know be able to sleep at night uh, from mm -hmm. the activities they do during the day, uh, it's uh, also important to understand that at this point it needs to happen on a much mm -hmm. uh, larger scale. I have another question for you. Um... You said that the origin of uh, you wanting to be an artist was going back uh, in time uh, when you were when you were young, and this component of being an artist. Uh, when did it start? When, when was the moment where? What was the trigger when you said, "Oh, I mean, you you spoke about this a little bit, you know, because you said I, I was diving and I see the beauty. Is it this? Because or is it by reading? Is it the newspapers? Is it?" Uh, uh, what's what's the the trigger to not only uh, become an artist but to become an artivist? It's the beauty mm -hmm. of the. Uh, 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 it's is, is it the to be afraid to lose something? Is it the, the a kind of uh, anxiety about the um, future? It's a very interesting question. So actually, my uh, training uh, as an artist was very traditional. So I was, um, I, I started uh, doing more like portraiture, so more uh, even social, I would say, projects, something that was more in line of um, who we are uh, as opposite of what the society wants us to be. And then uh, I was, uh, don't get me wrong, I love people, but uh, uh, I love nature. And even though I live in one of the busiest cities uh, in the world, every time I get a chance, I go uh, hiking, kayaking, uh, backcountry camping, and uh, uh, I just, I think nature is uh, what really helps me to, to relax, to just uh, achieve this um, meditating uh, state. And I don't remember taking a conscious decision like, oh, so now I am mm -hmm. going to do that. Mm -hmm. I think uh, the transitional um, point was when I started, um, I started uh, uh, exploring legends, legends that uh, connected with nature having certain elements of it um, as uh, uh, deities, as, as gods, uh, uh -huh. which we have actually in many cultures, right? Uh, a bit closer here to home, like uh, in uh, Navajo culture, right? The, let's say the Monument Valley. So those uh, rocks are actually um, sacred to indigenous people. The same way the uh, red rock in Australia is sacred and the same way coastal uh, cultures count, uh, um, consider coral reefs um sacred in their own right right so the the kind of uh the kind of animism right and uh, i started i think it started uh, to be more pronounced when i went to uh iceland uh, mm -hmm. where everything nature and um mythology is very intertwined so i think that was my transition from uh basically uh my main interest in humans shifting towards nature so basically how humans explain nature to themselves if it makes sense it does it does actually yeah that's very very i like i like this uh so it's 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 coming also from um from an impression from consciousness of something yeah, is, exactly. uh, okay we have a question which is a little bit uh, tricky but i'm going to ask it uh Where i personally I, I i personally have uh an answer, but I will I will leave you the floor because you are the artist here. Someone says how these paintings can change or help the world, help the world. So if you want to answer first, I I might have also something to say about that. If you don't, um, I I, th I think uh, uh, we would all agree that art is an essential part of uh, our culture, right? Uh, starting as far as um, having uh, paintings in the caves, uh, developing. Uh, from different uh, basic civilizations and with the different parts of the world, right? So let's just uh, start by agreeing that art is the uh, essential need for uh, human beings, right? Um, and our life without it would be, um, I think, mm. unfulfilling. 
So now let me go to the next, uh, sorry, I'm starting to sort of answer it from different angles, but I will get to the point, I promise. So creating is also a fundamental need. That's why so many people who are not actually creators by, uh, by their chosen job, right? Uh, they take uh, painting classes or dancing classes or pottery or singing because um, everything we do in our everyday life, we consume. Even if it's a smart consumption, like uh, um, watching a theater play or reading a book, it's still consuming something somebody else has created, right? But when you create out of music, out of silence, or um, a painting out of a blank canvas, you give back. Right? And I think giving back is mm -hmm. another fundamental need. Mm, That's why mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. giving presents really feels better than receiving them, right? Mm -hmm. So no, yeah, yeah, sorry. Th that, right? And then, uh, so keeping those two things in mind and what our society, like where our society would be without art, without culture. In every difficult part throughout history, uh, artists were the ones finding a way to, um, to work through it, to uh, make sense of their times. Uh, during the Second World War, where, for example, like basically this uh, core um, of the artists were formed uh, here in New York, like every, everywhere you look, artists are the ones who were um, sort of uh, really showing the change the societies are going through via their, their works, right? So um, I believe that uh, looking at a piece of art and even you uh, having this, listening to this conversation right now, right? Uh, it's, it, makes you, it makes you think, right? Exactly. Uh, and mm -hmm. for the past however many minutes you're listening to this, this is what you're thinking. You're being, thinking about uh, our oceans. You're thinking about mm -hmm. coral reefs. You're thinking about how they're deteriorating and whatever you can do. So mm -hmm. just you, you being aware of this, uh, that already makes me happy. That's, yes, and that's already an achievement here and now. Yeah. And if I may add something, it also resonates uh, in me with the deep role of an artist or the deep reason to be of an artist, which is to resonate or to vibrate with the world. And this is the world that we are living in. I mean, environment is, uh, is uh, suffering, needs attention. I'm trying to choose my words, but... And the artist doesn't... I mean, vibrates with the environment, vibrates with the, its surrounding and you... And its role is to retransmit and to express uh, the way he goes like a seismograph, you know, when there is an earthquake, you know, you know, it vibrates with, there is no, I mean, this is the role of the artist. He vibrates with the thing and he retransmits it with his heart, with his techniques, with his look, with his personality, his history. Uh, and and I, I think it's, uh, it's um, and yes, it changed the world. It does change the world. Again, we're, as you said perfectly well, we are here speaking about that. Uh, we are on Instagram. It's a new way of, uh, um, of visiting studios, but that's, uh, that remains uh, uh, a moment where we speak about environments. And there are thousands of museums right now who are speaking about environment all over the world on social media. Yes, that's useful through art, through history, through culture. So, yeah. Um, Thank you. Uh, I think uh, maybe uh, do do we have some question in the audience? Uh, I, I I would like to try something. We didn't plan this, <laughs> so what I would like to do, I will shut down my camera, and I think we could you know observe your painting for one minute, and then I will okay. close the live. Absolutely. Except which one is... do you prefer? The one that you're. I mean, this one is. Perfect. You know, I'm going to let you know the camera go for uh, for one week, for one one week, for one uh, minute, and I will let it observe, and I will shut down also my microphone, and I will close the the filming the live in one minute. Oh wait, thank we have you a so question. Thank you so much for joining, guys. Yeah, yeah thank you. Uh, we have a question. Yeah, the question is, how long does it take to create the painting? I think you you answered that, but you if we. Uh, yeah, it at the beginning, about, maybe. Um, mm. yeah, it takes about uh, a month to create one. Just to give you an idea, I'm going to back out a little bit and show you like how large they actually are, right? Mm. So it takes about a month, but then 
um, it's continuous uh, uh, work. I work, uh, let's say, nine, uh, ten hours a day, uh, five, six days a week. Wow. <laughs> so it's almost as slow as the corals are growing. <laughs> Excellent. I love this. Okay, so thank you very much. Claudia Goncalves is saying lindos. Okay, muchas gracias, Claudia. Gra gracias, Claudia. <laughs> How do you choose your subject? <laughs> now questions are coming. I mean, the subject with the environment, it's a reason to be of the artist, but maybe the, the, the specific things that you, that you paint, maybe you can say a word about that. Yeah, I, I think we, we covered um, why coral reefs, but uh, maybe the question was more about how do I pick this particular um, coral of this particular uh, uh, reef, right? And the answer mm -hmm. to that is, is uh, uh, it's very subjective, just like everything else, right? So mm -hmm. once you, it's something what inspires me and I look at it and I just can't wait to paint it. I just can't, if, if I could paint under the water, I would probably do that right there and then. Uh, however, uh, obviously dissolving some paint into the water is not exactly a, a sustainable way. So I will mm -hmm. stick to painting in my studio. But yeah, when I look at something and I just cannot uh, live, I cannot rest until I paint this. And uh, as Benjamin perfectly put it earlier, uh, I believe artists, we are um, channeling something, like channeling all those uh, vibrations of the uh, uh, universe, if you like, through mm -hmm. our creations. And sometimes I, when I paint, I almost feel like it was already created on some other level. And uh, I'm just um, transmitting something what already existed uh, into the canvas uh, now. And that's when it goes, I guess that's what's called inspiration. That's when uh, paintings goes uh, incredibly fast and uh, effortlessly, um, effortlessly falling into place. Excellent. So if we don't have any other questions, I think we are going to contemplate um, this tribute, this call, this, this uh, artwork. Um, it's a multifarious... Uh, okay, Bound Design Studio said, amazing, thank you, your work is beautiful. Thank you so much, guys. If you want to uh, see more work in progress, you can just uh, follow me on uh, Instagram and I'm always up for something marine and blue. So the Instagram account of Nicolina is Nicolina, N-I-K-O-L-I-N-A, Kovalenko, K-O-V-A-L-E-N-K-O. Maybe I can type it in the chat so people can subscribe right now. I'll do that. And thank you so much for listening. Thank you for being here. So I just post your Instagram account. Perfect, thank you. So now we're going to remain silent. Uh, uh, Nicolina, if you can shut down your microphone, I will do the same. And in one minute, like uh, one minute, we, we, I, will, I will close the live. Without, without, yes, a little one minute meditation around your, your art. <laughs> 